All right, we've got dialogue, portraits, and name tags. However, I know many of you are following this series because you want to have branching dialogue options, and we don't have that yet. So in this video, we're gonna set up our option buttons so that we can actually make some choices. Let's get started. We're gonna dive right in with some coding here. So you can head to your dialogue folder, open up your scripts, and head to Advanced Dialogue Manager. Now, as usual, we're gonna start off with some variables. So let's head down to the bottom of our variable section here and make some button references. The first will be a private game object array, which will hold all of our different buttons in the game. Next, we'll make a private text mesh pro text array. And this is actually just where we're gonna be able to store the text that's gonna go on each of those buttons. Next, we'll make a private game object, and this is just gonna be for the panel itself. We'll call this options panel, so we can toggle it on and off. All right, let's pop down into our start method, and right at the top, we're just gonna begin by finding the buttons that we just created references for. So let's start off with our option button array, and to fill that array, we're gonna do a game object search, but instead of a normal find, we're gonna do a find game objects with tag, and specifically, we're looking for ones that are tagged as option button. Let's do a quick check in Unity, where if you just go into your option panel, click on those option buttons, and at the top, you wanna make sure that they are in fact tagged as option button. Make sure your spelling matches what you put in your code. If you don't have that, you can just add the tag here. All right, next we wanna make a reference to the actual panel holding all of those buttons, and to do that, we'll just type options panel equals game object dot find options panel. Don't forget your S on options like I did here. This will allow us to toggle that panel on and off by doing options panel dot set active false. Now that we've found our buttons and button panels so that we can toggle them on and off, we'll next need to find the text mesh pro text on the buttons so that we can decide what we want the buttons to say. To do this, we're gonna type option button text is equal to new TMP text. And then in square brackets, we're gonna put option button dot length. And what we're doing here is just setting the length of the ray or the number of items that will be in it. Unity requires us to do this when we're filling an array. We first have to tell it how many items will be in the array. So now we've got an array of buttons and an array of text that's gonna go on the buttons. Now we just need to make sure that they're connected to each other. To do this, we're gonna type four and double tap tab. And we're gonna create a loop that's going to go through the option button dot length, meaning just for every option button that we have, it's gonna repeat this loop. Now we're just gonna look at each item in our option button text array and we're going to assign it to a specific option button. To do this, our loop is just gonna make sure that each option button text element is equal to the actual option button, and then on that button, it's just gonna look in its children to find its text mesh pro component. Now option button one will be connected to text one and option two to text two, et cetera. So now that our buttons and text are connected, it's time to actually make that text say what we want it to say. Now before we leave here, I'm just gonna quickly get rid of these brackets. Since there's only one thing in the for loop, we don't need them and it just looks nice and clean without. At that point, we can head down to play dialogue. And at the moment, we're checking our current conversation actors to see if there's a random actor or it's a recurring actor and then setting data based on that. But what we wanna do now is make it so that it also detects whether or not there's a branch in the text. So to do this, we'll just check and see if current conversation actor whichever step we're currently at, is equal to a dialog actor's branch. And if there is, that means that we need to have our option buttons turn on and display some text. Now to do that, we're gonna have to start with a loop. So again, type four and double tap tab. And we wanna loop through the current conversation dot option text dot length. So if we've written in three options, we'll go through three times. And first thing, if the current conversation option text is null, so that just means if it comes to a part in the text where there's no text, AKA we're out of options, then we'll wanna tell that specific option button to be set active false. However, if there is data in the option button text, then what we wanna do is actually tell that text dot text, meaning the actual words themselves on the buttons, to be equal to whatever we've put as our current conversation option text. And this is just the information we typed in on our NPC dialogue for each individual NPC. At that point, we can now have that option button actually be set active to true. Now the beauty of this is that it's only going to actually turn on the buttons that we wanna use and it will leave the other ones off. Now with that done, we're actually gonna copy this line because we're also gonna to need to make sure that we deal with our buttons, whether they're on or off at the very beginning. So we can head up to our start method. 
Now first I'm just going to paste that line in there for safekeeping and then we're going to create a, another for loop. So for double tap tab and we want to go through our option button dot length here. We can then grab that option button set active, move it up. I'll just remove those brackets to keep things clean. And all we want to do right now is make sure that the buttons are actually turned off at the start of the game. So you can change that true to a false. Now I know it's been a little while since we created all this, so I'm just going to quickly review how to make a conversation. So you can go into your dialogue scriptable object folder, and we should already have a conversation loaded in which will now have this option text array. You should have a bunch of options as well, which will just have the dialogue that will appear when you click them. And if you don't, we can go create advanced dialogue scriptable object. All right, at this point, you can look at your conversation and just drag and drop in all of your options. You'll notice I only made three, so I left the fourth one empty. We can now click on our option text and just type in what we want to happen when we click the button. So you'll notice here that the first option he says not much. So in my conversation, I'll make the option button text be not much. You can then go through and add whatever text you want for each of your other buttons. All right, now what we want to do is make it so that after we've gone through those first two dialog boxes, our text manager knows that it needs to have a branch here, which will show the different options for the branch. All right, at this point, you can just click on your NPC, go into the dialog handler object, and just make sure your conversation is in fact loaded at the top here. And actually, we don't need anything else, so we can just set that array to one. Now, if you were to test your game, you'd notice a few things. First of all, when you start the conversation, your options are not showing up, which is just as intended. However, when you get to the end and push a button, you'll notice that nothing's happening, which means we've just got a tiny bit of work left to do. So if you look in our advanced dialog manager under the play dialog method, right down near the bottom here, the problem we're running into is that at the moment, it, we are getting to the branch and our code is trying to run the dialog associated with the branch. But of course, a branch isn't actually a character doing talking. It's just a prompt to look at options. So what we need to do is just create an if statement here that's going to check to see if the step that we're currently in in our conversation is less than the amount of dialog for the conversation. So if we get to step three, but there's only two pieces of dialog, it'll notice. Now, if there is still dialogue to display, we'll put that inside of this if statement, and we can get rid of our brackets for simplicity. Now, that will fix the problem where we're getting hung up when we get to the branch. However, at the moment, even though we are setting the text for our buttons and the number of buttons, our buttons still aren't going to show up. And that's just because we haven't turned the button panel back on. So what we're going to do here is add an else statement. So if our current step is equal or greater than the amount of dialogue there is, in this case meaning we've hit a branch, what we want to do is turn the options panel on. Now if we're turning the options panel on here, that means we're also going to have to turn the panel back off again when we're done with the conversation. So we can scroll on down to the turn off dialog, and here is where we're going to paste that in, but just set our value to be false, so that at the end of the conversation we turn the button panel off. And with those changes, we can now talk to our NPC, work our way through dialog and see the appropriate number of buttons. We leave the conversation and come back. The options are gone, but they appear again at the end. This is actually working pretty nice. We finally have some dialog up and running with choices. In the next video, we'll set things up so that we can actually make those choices and have a dynamic text appear depending on what we choose. Looking forward to seeing you in that next video. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.